Good day, everybody, and welcome to the Board Game Museum's Top 100 Vintage Board Games. And today we're going to be looking at the exclusive Top 10. So let's get started. Number 10 is a board game called King Oil. Now, in King Oil, you're going to have a little 3D board. Uh, on the top, there's going to be an oil field with a bunch of different plots of land that you can buy. And uh, on the bottom, there's three different wheels that you'll be able to spin to change up the gameplay, and there'll be about a 1,000 different combinations. Uh, now, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be drawing cards, and it's going to tell you how many wells you'll be able to drill, if any. It'll also tell you how much money that you've made from the wells that you already have. And you're also going to have fire cards you're going to have to contend with. Now, when you're drilling uh, for the oil wells, um, you're going to be uh, there's a bunch of holes that you're going to be sticking the drill in on your plot of land, and you're hoping that you're going to be able to strike oil. If you don't strike oil, then uh, it's going to cost you six thousand dollars. And if you do strike oil, uh, depending on how shallow it is, it could be two thousand, four thousand, or six thousand. It just depends on the depth. Um, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to bankrupt everybody else. Now you're going to be making money with all these different oil rigs, uh, but at the same time you're having to uh, be careful of your opponents. Now you've got uh, different oil pipes that you're going to be able to use, and uh, if you're able to get enough oil rigs up, you can actually purchase pipelines and drain them from your opponent's land, and they're going to have to end up paying you money. It's a good game if you like Monopoly and games like that because it does have that uh, Monopoly aspect to it when you're trying to eliminate everybody, uh, but this game can be brutal, and uh, those oil lands go quick too. Uh, one thing you got to do is you got to watch your money and you got to be careful uh, <laughs> not to run out of money. Uh, so it's a fun game, King Oil. Number nine is a grill game and it is Dark Tower. Yes, you knew Dark Tower was going to be here in the top 10. Uh, anyway, Dark Tower is a game that has a very cool electronic component. Uh, one of the best that I've seen, and uh, way ahead of its time. Uh, but anyway, in the game, it's a round board, and you're going to be uh, trying to uh, gather an army big enough to invade the tower and then destroy the brigands inside. Uh, now, along the way, you're going to be having to combat plague. You're going to have to combat a dragon. You're going to combat brigands. You're going to have to deal with maybe getting lost. You're going to have an opportunity to go to the bazaar and get things uh, that will protect you from plague and a scout, a lot of things like that. Of course, you've got food that you've got to contend with as well. You don't want to run out of food. Um, and man, this game is a lot of fun. Now, I don't know how this game would fare today. I guess it really just depends on the player, and it costs a lot of money to get. It's a rare game, and it goes for about $200 at the very least. Uh, there is an app that you can get called the Droid Tower, and there's others too that you can try out on your phone to see if you like it enough to actually get it. Uh, but it's a really, really good game. Um, the tower itself is a marvel, in my opinion. One of the first uh, items to ever use a microchip, and it has three carousels that are going to be going around, and they're going to be showing different pictures, and they're going to be keeping track of the battles, and it basically just keeps track of the whole game for you, and it's really cool. It's a cult classic and uh, still loved by many people, Dark Tower. Number eight is actually two games, and both of them are from the Milton Bradley Game Master series, and they are Conquest of the Empire and Samurai Swords. Now, Samurai Swords used to be called Shogun, and later was renamed to Takuza in the reprint. But in Conquest of the Empire, uh, you were going to try to knock out all of the opposing Caesars in the game, and uh, you've got cavalry and infantry and catapults and things of that nature. Uh, now, one of the cool things in this game is you're going to be able to build roads, and that's going to help your army to uh, go from one one part of land to another a lot faster. Another cool aspect is tribute that you're going to be getting, and the tribute is made of these really nice coins. And another cool aspect of the game is once you start earning more tribute, it's going to cost more to buy people in your army. So this keeps the runaway aspect of the game away. Uh, now you also have boats that you can buy uh, to sail. And uh, one cool part too is you can buy these fortifications uh, to help you. Um, there's certain things that will help you increase your numbers in the die roll when you're battling. But a fun part of the game is if you are getting attacked by an army and you know you're going to lose, you can destroy your fortifications so they won't get the advantage. <laughs> Very cool game. Now, in Samurai Swords, uh, this is set in feudal Japan, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to take over a certain amount of land. Now, the really cool aspect of this game is 
it's got something called Koku, and you're going to be bidding or buying different things uh, before the round starts. One thing you can bid on is the use of the ninja. The ninja uh, can kill off uh, your opponent's Daimo, which I'll talk about. That's like a leader of an army. And uh, each team is going to have three armies that they can run. Uh, you can also spy on the land. Now, you can also bid on when you want to start. You want to be the first, the second, or the third player when uh, the round starts. You can bid on that. You can also bid on what are called Ronin, which are mercenaries. Um, and you can put them on cards of lands that you have secretly. So if someone attacks you, you can bust out the Ronin and say, ha, 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 ha. Uh, but there's a lot of different things on this game that you can bid on. This is what makes the game so great, in my opinion, because the gameplay is going to constantly be changing around, but you have controls to what you want to do. Even if you fall behind, you can still catch up with this. Now, with the armies, you can put what are called provincial armies on the land, similar to Risk, where you have like one or two armies on a certain land. Uh, but the main armies consist of about up to 16 different army figures along with the leader. And you'll have three of these things that are going to be marching along. Uh, so you could very well have 16 people going up against three or something like that. But this is a fantastic game if you like war games. Highly recommend both these games, Conquest of the Empire and Samurai Swords. Number seven is a kid's game that uses a record player as its main mechanic or component, and it's a fantastic game in its own right, and it is called Voice of the Mummy. Well, where do I start with this game? It uh, looks fantastic. Uh, it's a little 3D board. It has a lot of Egyptian hieroglyphics on it. The theme is great. I love the theme. And what you're going to be doing in this game is you're going to be trying to get the most amount of jewels. There'll be jewels on the board, and you're also going to be activating the mummy when you land on a certain spot. Uh, there's like a little mummy crypt, I guess, on the top, and it looks really cool. And underneath this thing is a record player. Um, you're going to hit a little switch, and whenever you land on this mummy spot, the mummy's going to give you a command. It may move you somewhere. It may tell you to give up jewels. It may tell you to take jewels. Um, now, once you reach the top, you're going to... Uh, take the big jewel, which is worth five points, and then the snake, which is worth negative five points. But the thing with the snake is you can't win the game with it. In order to win the game, you have to go back to your home base by exact count, and you have to have the most amount of jewels. Now, when the game gets really fun is once those the jewel and the snake are taken, because now people are going to be trying to get as many jewels as they can, and they can steal them from you if they land on you by exact count. So it becomes a dogfight in the second half of this game. It is just so much fun. Um, people are going to be trying to get onto their home spot, but they can't roll the number that they need. And then at this point, the mummy's basically passing the snake around as well. So you may be close to your home spot, and he may give you the snake, and you can't win. It's a great game. Voice of the Mummy. Number six is a game that is based off of a very popular book and very popular movies, and it is called Lord of the Rings. Now, there are several Lord of the Rings games out there, and this is the one that was made in 2001 from Fantasy Flight Games and I believe Hasbro too. Now, the way this game works is you're going to be uh, trying to get your hobbits to Mount Doom to toss the ring in. Now, there's four different player boards, and then there is... Uh, overview board that are going to have your hobbits and Sauron on there. Now, throughout the game, Sauron's influence is going to be uh, moving him closer to the hobbits, and if he reaches one of the hobbits that has a ring, they're going to lose. Now, the four different player boards are based on the book, and it's basically the journey to Mount Doom. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be drawing these event cards, most of which are going to be bad, and you're going to be having to resolve them by uh, getting resource cards, and you're trying to get to the end of the board uh, by following these certain paths. Um, and you've got Gandalf cards that you can play as well, and this is just a great game, man. Oh, my gosh. It's not easy either. Uh, just trying to get past one board is hard enough, but you got to go through four of them. And uh, I remember the last time my wife and I played this game, we got to Mount Doom, and it was down to one die roll. If my wife rolled the right thing, we would toss the ring in Mount Doom. If she rolled wrong, Sauron, which was one space away from us, would end up getting us, and we would lose. And she rolled the right number, and we won. It was very satisfying for sure. Uh, now, this game does have expansions, uh, and... Uh, they add to the game for sure, but a fantastic game, Lord of the Rings. Number five is another grail game, and uh, this is a game my family loves, and this has become a tradition in our household now, and this is Fireball Island. 
Ah, oh, yes, Fireball Island with the 3D board and the f shooting marbles. Anyway, in this game, uh, you've got an explorer, and you're going to be moving around this 3D board, and you're going to be trying to get the jewel all the way to the end of the island. You're going to try to get off the island with it. Now, of course, you've got fireballs on this game, and they're marbles, and they're going to be getting shot at you at various times in the game. Uh, and if they knock you over, you're going to have to go back some, and then if you have the jewel, you're going to lose it. Now, there's also a lot of different playing cards in this game, too, and you can play most of these cards at any time. One can be a fireball card you can throw out to try to get somebody. Uh, there's other cards that are going to move people back. Uh, man, this is a great game, too. Uh, my family loves this game, and uh, we always have fun playing it. And I cannot recall a time when there was ever a runaway leader problem because so many times we all get right to the end, almost in a single file line, and the games would always be so close. Um, but it's a great game. Now, one of the reasons why I have this listed so high, I think, is because of the enjoyment that I've gotten out of this game with my family. It probably would not be as high if it wasn't for that, but we just love this game. Now, Restoration Games made a sequel recently, and I have not played it, but it has gotten rave reviews. Uh, it also has a lot of expansions that you can get to with it. And uh, I would recommend Fireball Island, the sequel, for sure. But if you like vintage board games like I do, you can't lose with Fireball Island. Number four is a game that has got tremendous customization involved in it. And you really, there is no limit as to what you can do with this game. And it is called HeroScape. Now, in HeroScape, you're going to have a whole bunch of different tiles, uh, and you're going to basically be able to build your own landscape with them. Um, and you also have water tiles, and in some of the expansions, you've got swamp tiles, you've got ice tiles, you've got lava tiles, uh, you've got buildings you can put on there. You can basically build your a whole, a whole world with this thing. Now, I have seen pictures uh, where people would get multiple sets, and they would just build these humongous structures uh, that would take up my entire garage. Uh, now, on top of this, you've got a whole bunch of different uh, miniatures and characters that you can get with cards. And some of them are going to be grouped in teams. They're going to have uh, team abilities. Some are going to be by themselves. You have There's humans. There's dragons. There's orcs. There's all kinds of different uh, characters that you can get in this game. Um, and they all have different abilities. And ultimately, what you're trying to do is you're either trying to kill off everybody or meet a certain goal. You can make up your own uh, scenarios. Um, I've seen people actually make up their own characters with their character cards. Heck, I've done that. I actually did that with The Simpsons. <laughs> I don't know how well they would fare against these dragons and orcs, but hey, maybe one day I'll find out. This is a cult classic. There's a lot of pages about this game on the internet for sure. And uh, it's a lot of fun to play. Uh, if you want to get the cheaper version, I think Magic the Gathering has a game that plays awful similar to this. Uh, but if you like games that are big and you can make them as big as you want, depending on how many tiles you got, you cannot go wrong with Hero Escape. Number three is probably one of the greatest electronic board games ever made, and it is called The Omega Virus. Now, The Omega Virus is a time game, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to find The Omega Virus before time runs out. He completely takes over your ship. Uh, now, you've got your space explorer, and then you're going to have use of a probe sometimes. You're going to be exploring these different rooms, some of which you're going to need keys for trying to find it. You have to get three different pieces of equipment in order to shut down The Omega Virus, which you're going to find as you're searching. Now, one of the really cool things about this game, and this is a co-op game, by the way, is that you can actually attack your help if you want to be a glory hog. <laughs> um, if they happen to have a piece of equipment that you want, you can attack them and steal it <laughs> in a co-op game. But the components are great. The board looks incredible. Um, it actually has places where it folds out. Um, the pieces where you're going to be using the game are great, too. Even the instruction manual is made like a comic book. It's great. This is a game that I would recommend to anybody that loves electronic games. It's just a keeper, Omega Virus. Number two is a game I had as a kid, and I still love it, and it is Crossbows and Catapults. Now, when you first look at Crossbows and Catapults, it just looks like a simple little kid's game. It actually says on the box that it's for ages five and up. But, man, it's so much more than that. But what you have is you have a little placemat that has a little jewel in the middle. And this is basically going to make up your courtyard. You're going to place a castle piece on top of the jewel, and then you're going to build walls around the castle. Now, you have a crossbow and a catapult on your side, and you're going to be having a six-foot long play field that you can use and ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to win the game in four different ways or up to four different ways uh, you can knock the flag off your opponent's castle you can knock a caravan to where his uh, jewel is you can get what are called spies in his courtyard i think four or five of them 
And then another way is you can actually kidnap all of your opponent's caroms. So I love the fact that there's multiple winning conditions in this game. Um, now, the crossbows and catapults, you're going to be shooting these caroms at your opponent and knocking over his wall, trying to knock over his castle. Um, you can actually position the carom in the middle of the board to try to get a better shot. But you, if your opponent ends up shooting a carom and hitting it, he's going to end up uh, capturing it. Now, you can also lose caroms if uh, you end up hitting it in a certain area on your opponent, and he's going to basically be putting them in his castle. Now, where the spies come in is when you're actually able to put the caroms inside your opponent's courtyard, and that's where the spies are going to come in. And you can actually barter with your opponent and say, hey, you know, if you get rid of your spy, I'll give you one of your caroms back. Uh, so <laughs> you can do that. But when you play this game, it's always a lot of fun. I always laugh when people miss with those catapult shots. <laughs> Everybody, we just always have a fun time playing this game. But it's a great game, crossbows and catapults. And finally, my number one game. Well, it's a grail game. This game actually started a genre all its own. Um, still played today, still very popular, still has a tremendous following, and it is Hero Quest. Well, with Hero Quest, where do I start? Well, this is the game that you are going to have an overseer, which is going to be one player. And he's going to have a quest book in front of him that's going to have a map, which is basically the game board. And it's also going to show where all the furniture goes, where all the different creatures go, uh, and all sorts of different things. And it's also going to say what the quest is. Now, the heroes are going to be trying to meet the quest, and the person who is controlling the game is going to try to stop them. Uh, one of the things of this game is that uh, the heroes are not going to know what is in the rooms or anything until they actually look inside the room. And then the person who's overseeing the game is going to place all these things in there. And you've got a lot of battling that's going to be going on. The wizard, of course, is going to have different spells, but he's going to be weaker than the barbarian who has a lot of strength. And this is a co-op game as well, and you can play with one player or with all four if you want to. And one of the cool things about this game is the quest book has a lot of different quests in it, but if you're able to... Um, finish the quest, whatever money you get, you'll actually be able to buy equipment for the next quest, which is, I love that. That is awesome. Uh, the game is just a lot of fun to play. And one of the great things about this game is that you can make up your own quests. It makes the game's replayability unlimited. It's a historical game too. Uh, games like Descent, they came from this game. Um, and it's a game I would definitely recommend, but with all these other, uh, dungeon crawler games out there that are probably more updated, you may be fine not getting Hero Quest. But for people like me who collect vintage board games, I cannot recommend Hero Quest enough. It's a great game. And that is my number one. So ladies and gentlemen, that does it for my top 100. I hope you enjoyed it. We will see you next time. Keep on gaming. We'll see you later.